Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 14 of the platform specific series of my 6J2000 assembly programming tutorials. Now, last week we looked at how to set the pallets on the X6J8000. This week we're going to be looking at the Atari ST. There's a wide variety of different versions of the Atari ST, but it's the most basic versions we're going to be looking at today. Some of the systems like the Atari Falcon had much more color depth, but we are going to look at the most basic one, because I think as a beginner this is perfectly enough for us to want to program, and of course by targeting the base system, we know that the majority of people will be able to play our game. So how does the Atari ST define its colors? Well, it's really quite simple. Each color channel is defined by three bits, and we need to write the definition to an address from FF8240 to FF825F, and each definition uses two bytes, one word, although a lot of the bits are obviously unused, at least on the original Atari ST. Now, in these tutorials, we actually use a common format that we use on all of the systems, including the Z80 and 6502 tutorials, and we convert that format from the common one nibble per channel green, red, blue format with the top nibble unused into whatever the actual system needs. Now, there's two benefits to doing this. Firstly, we only need to set our palette once and we can forget about it, irrespective of how many systems we program for. And the other advantage is if we want to do clever tricks like palette switching later on, where the colors change over time, like there's a fade in and a fade out, we can use a common piece of code that does the work of doing that. And then we can just let our code that does that conversion do the final job of getting the eventual hardware to do the job. So I think this is a good way of getting things working quickly and easily. And although it does waste a little bit of memory, and that isn't much of a problem on the 68000s, but even on the 6502, I think the benefits do justify this. So anyway, we're going to be looking at the Atari ST format this week. Let's have a look at the example code. So here's the code we're running today. Now, we've seen it before. It's the Chibico sprite on screen, but we didn't look at how the actual colors were being set because Chibico's skin is white, the clothing is cyan, and the hair is purple, and we need to set those. So how do we do it? Well, you can see in the background here, if I can just grab control of my mouse again, we've got the palette definition just here, and we've defined it with this label palette. And so we've got four colors, black, which is, of course, zero for green, red, and blue here, and purple, which is a mid-level for red and blue and zero for green, and sign here is almost full green, completely full blue, and no red. And then white is full red, green, and blue. So that's how we're defining our colors. Very straightforward to look at. And of course, the conversion code is doing the work for us. Now, when it comes to applying this palette, the palette code is identical on all the systems. All we need to do is define the source address for our palette here. All we're doing here is we're defining the source address for our palette in A0. We're then defining the palette entry number we want to change in D0 here and we're just incrementing that each time in the loop. And then we're loading the new definition for the palette from that memory address in D1. So when we call set palette, D0 is our palette number, and D1 is our new palette definition, one nibble per color channel. And here is the code that's going to be doing the work for us today. So the first thing we want to do is we do want to just check we're not being given a Duff palette entry because some of the systems do support more than 16 colors, but the Atari ST does not. So if we've got a value higher than 16 in D0, we just skip over here and return, and we return. Now, once we've got past that though, what we're going to do is we're going to back up all of the registers so any work we have to do in between doesn't affect any of the registers for our main loop. So there we go. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the memory address of the entry that we need to change. Now, we're just going to strip out any other data here because possibly the user's made a mistake and only set the low byte. So just for safety, we're just stripping all of that out. And then we're rotating one to the left, effectively doubling the color number. This, of course, is because there are two bytes per entry within that memory address. As I said before, the memory for the palette is between FF8240 and FF825F, and there's two bytes, one word, per color entry. So once we've doubled that, all we need to do is add it to that base and store that in A0. And that, now we've got the destination for our color in A0. And all we need to do next is we need to convert D0 into a format that we can use for the palette. So what we're doing here is we've got our palette entry in D1. And we're just going to take each color channel component out of it and we're going to move it into the correct position, and then we're going to be oring it into D2 here. So D2 will be our buildup, and D0 is our temporary source. Now, of course, our definition uses four bits 
but our tau est only needs three so we're going to ignore the bottom bit in each case so first we're going to do the red here and so we're doing an and here of e and that is effectively removing the bottom bit then all we need to do is rotate the three bits of our source definition into the correct position for the Atari ST. Now here is our eventual Atari ST positions. So in this case, we're just defining the red part. We then move that into D2 and we're carrying on. Now next, we're gonna get the green part here. So you can see we're now ending in an E in this position here. Now remember this top part of our source definition doesn't do anything at all. It, it's actually unused. So that top nibble never does anything. So once we've got that green part here, we then need to shift it to here, and that's going to take five bit shifts to the right. Once we've done that, we then just or that into D2 as well. So D2 now contains the red and the green. Finally, we just need to do the blue. We load that in here by adding these three bits here, which is of course E. We then rotate once to the right. That moves them to this position here, or that into D2, and then we just move that to A0 here, and that has effectively sent this format, which is what we need, into the memory addresses here. And that's how we convert our one nibble per channel into the three bit per channel, and of course, swapping the red and the greens order in the word here. And that's really all there is to it. Now these 68,000 machines make it very easy for us with their 16 color options. With the eight bits, it can be more tricky because sometimes we've got weighted palettes that have more blue than green and things, but it's not so much of a problem here. Now, of course, if you're only interested in programming the Atari ST, you wouldn't need to do all of this. You could create a native format and then just send it directly. But as I say, I think there are definitely benefits to actually programming in this way and using a common format on all of the systems. And I think as a tutorial, it makes it clear how we can work between the different systems. And of course, if you want to just modify it and use your own code, you're welcome to do so. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. We're going to be looking at the Atari ST again in the future, so please follow along if you're into the Atari ST. But thanks for watching today, and goodbye.